Well, I think and it's I also the fact that they also said that, you know, we have inherent individual freedoms. It wasn't about the collective or the group or the greater good. It was really about us all being a free humanity, all of us having that pursuit to life, liberty, and uh, happiness outside of the government. They could never come and take that away. On the other side of this, I want to go over the Obama administration and really just the lies there. Oh, we're going to be out in 18 months. I have a plan. Well, the open plan now is we're going to have troops there until 2011. That's in Iraq. And even in 2011, December, we'll have 50,000. Back after this, it's the Info Warrior. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? You know, so we have this shining political star who comes out of nowhere to rise to the top of the Democratic Party. Let's remember he was a state senator up until 2004. As a state senator, he was allowed to give the uh, congressional keynote speech at the Democratic Party in 2004. Then all of a sudden, when he gets an actual Senate seat, he gets this actual Senate seat, he serves half a term, declares his run for the presidency, becomes the president. Now, all these people on the left were saying, oh, Obama voted against the war. He's going to get at us out of the war. He promised he has a plan. And at first he said, yes, 18 months we're going to withdraw. And now the current plan again is they have redistributed forces from Iraq into Afghanistan. Uh, they plan on having at least 50,000 troops there at the end of December 2011. And we'll see where it goes from there. What are your feelings on that? <laughs> well, I don't know if about about 18 months. It was originally we're going to end the war when he was running the primary and needed to co-opt the anti-war movement. Then it was 12 months. Then it was 16 months. Then it was 16 months with uh, residual force of 50,000 troops on 14 permanent bases with an increased reliance on private contractor mercenaries. Then it was, of course, after he took office and met with the generals who we know through the military-industrial complex revolving door actually run our foreign policy. After meeting with them, he changed it again to 19 months, and he made that announcement in the beginning of March, which is mm -hmm. exactly 19 months from his first midterm election. Not a coincidence, but that's the only change we've seen out of the Obama administration, of course, in terms of our foreign policy. Wait, 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 that, that's not true. We've got a more, aggressive, uh, a more aggressive foreign policy now in the AFPAC region, that conflict having grown magically into another country a surge of 30,000 troops there, and it all adds up to a foreign policy that is really more aggressive than Bush's in, in the final equation. And by September of this year, Obama will have deployed more troops to combat than Bush's. That's just mind-blowingly nuts. But uh, your listeners are, are better educated than, than most. We guys don't need to hear about what Obama's really about, because you all know that we didn't have a revolution you know, in, in this country in 2008. We have a growing movement towards revolution, but we didn't finish it in 2008, and we did not fundamentally change anything that you need to do to get elected president in this country. And the reason Barack Obama is president today, I think the main reason, is because he outbid everyone else on Wall Street. He was the Wall Street candidate. He matched everybody's bids everywhere else. Maybe he outdid them a little bit, but where he really shone was uh, was was on Wall Street. That's where he really outbid everybody, and that's why all that's where all of the uh, all the Federal Reserve notes are going now. Well, I also think that he also fits the mold that they were really looking for. They were able to put this guy on the cover of Spider Man on Rolling Stone with him <laughs> looking like Jesus Christ himself, literally in the clouds with lightning coming off his body. They were able, as soon as he was president, to sell commemorative plates to sell coins with him <laughs> on with JFK. Right now, they're running city year commercials where his slogan I am change is running up with Gandhi, Mother Teresa, JFK, RFK, all these, you know, truly great leaders for peace. And they're able to package that in a way where it's going to be cool to be part of a militaristic youth Stasi force wearing a red, white, and black jacket. I mean, to me, that is just pure insanity beyond that of Hitler because we're supposed to know better. You know, I, and, you know, back in the day, the glo I'm serious. Back in the day, the globalists used, 
I mean, they used Hitler and, you know, white racism to, to bring this up and that, but now they're trying to, you know, play on to minorities and people. I mean, you watch the commercials and, you know, the kid literally says, you know, as a person of color, City Year has really helped me. And he's having people like Kevin Johnson, who's uh, the mayor in Sacramento. He, he had one of these hood cores. Now AmeriCorps has given them even more money. He's one of the, the select mayors that's getting behind this program nationally. It's already all over the place from the Give Act. And you're just going to see more and more of it. And if they can't get you into City Year, they're going to sure try by training you to be an explorer in the Boy Scout program. I mean, how do you feel that 14 to 17-year-olds are now going to be trained to take on domestic terrorism, including, you know, Iraqi mm -hmm. war veterans like yourself? <laughs> the one thing we learn from history is that we never friggin' learn from history. Mm-hmm. They've always foisted these things on us by, by either scaring us into believing that you need to turn to a strong man or by making it cool. I mean, you're right. And it's, it's, a, it's incredible how gun-shy people are from making the Hitler comparison because our, our dialogue has been so stifled by political correctness. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's a very apropos comparison. It's listen. It's the real deal, and it doesn't matter whether it's Bush's face on it in the hard line of invading nations and the Patriot Act in a parallel to the Enabling Act, or the further uh, of his administration's goals with this new administration. Look, they already openly track, trace, and database every single thing every single person in this country does through a database system. Uh, whatever you do on the internet, whatever you do on cell phones, it came out in 2006 when people started suing AT&T for having secret rooms where they just had dead drives and the engineers complained about it and it was just uh, almost two weeks ago now on June 4th, they actually held it up in appellate court that the Bush administration and the Obama administration have literally retroactive immunity against spying mm -hmm. on the entire American public as if that's legal. That, that, that's the kind of thing that that makes me hot, that people don't understand that this transcends administrations. This transcends your right and left paradigm. Oh, yeah. This, I mean, you have articles now, they're openly talking about that Disney, Hearst, and NBC are going to combine into one super conglomerate. So that means it's one media corporation and then uh, uh, News Corp, which is Fox News, Sky News, Rupert Murdoch. So ABC, NBC, and CBS will all be owned by the same corporation, and then we have Rupert Murdoch and his gang on the other side. Yeah, I, I can tell the news is only going to get more fair and balanced, uh, you know, here in the future. All they need to do now is burn the Reich thing. Oh, wait, <laughs> they already got that. Never mind. <laughs> exactly. So tell me uh, how, you, how you start to come into, you, you said you're in the exploring uh, phase of running for Congress. When did you finally stay up? You know, my, my activism is good, but I'm going to take it one step further. I'm not taking it any step further. Activism is as far as it needs to go. And I don't want to be a congressman so much as I want to be an activist that just so happens to be a member of Congress. I think that's the way it was supposed to be for all 35, and we've kind of forgotten that because there's really only a handful up there that are there for the right reasons, that are fighting for any kind of principle. But what I've taken it upon myself in my life as my mission is really three things. And the first one is pulling people out of their bubbles, you know, waking people up. And, and you guys... I really appreciate the, the, the role that, that your listeners take in, in this general effort that, you know, for those of us who know more, we have a greater responsibility to share that knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, I, really, I really do appreciate that. I mean, your, your audience represents a, a very important part of our broader freedom movement. Well, thank uh, you. But pulling people, yes, uh, you're welcome, but pulling people out of their bubbles that they've been pushed into by all of these forces that exist for their, the, the perpetuation of their own power. But pulling people out of their bubbles where they only consider the things that affect their daily quality of life and, and never consider the moral implications of their actions. So that's, that's one thing. And, and already, just being in the exploratory phase, getting to speak from the platform of a potential candidate has been, uh, you know, has been, a, has been really a lot of fun, uh, especially in the district, having not announced the party, getting to build support from a lot of different groups. Um, but the next thing for me is, is to take on and do what I can to mitigate or end as much as possible the actual human suffering that is associated with the current statism. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about foreign policy, you know, our overt military actions are really a small part of it compared to our financial manipulations of the rest of the world and within our own country. Uh, the, the kind of human suffering that results from the economic exploitation, the uh, corporate empire, and the you know 
all across the globe. It really is, of course, all traced back to the Federal Reserve. But then a third thing. You mean our me, lords that just got more power today? They're, they're, <laughs> don't, haven't you heard? I mean, the Federal Reserve, hey, they're the greatest thing since breakfast, and they're going to start hey. regulating the economy, and everything's going to be okay. We just, meanwhile, the media won't even talk about Resolution uh, HR 1207 that has over 222 co sponsors, is ready to go into the, yep. uh, the House on the floor. The only time you've seen anything about it was one clip on CNBC where the guy said, well, if they audit the Fed, the Fed will have to shut down, and basically Armageddon will happen. So we can't do that. You know, let's see how the, far this gets. I don't think it's going to get far past the floor, but, you know, it'll be good fodder in the next film that we put out here in the info yep. war when people actually see, you know, the second Obama deception and go, wow, well, they did audit the Fed and uh, they didn't allow that. It's kind of like when Kucinich goes up before Congress, he issues 33 articles of impeachment on the Bush I was administration. There that day. I oh was my. sitting in the House gallery that day. <laughs> I, I have the last three in my film, Fabled Enemies, which were pertaining to 9-11. And everybody acts like nobody did anything. I'm like, this guy tried to impeach the administration, yeah. and not one major media outlet would cover it.